Hi, this is Tom Fitton with Judicial Watch here on Facebook to provide you a special update on these new IRS scandal documents we have showing how there was this effort generated by the Hill, specifically a Democrat senator, Sheldon Whitehouse, Democrat from Rhode Island, to prosecute some of the same groups that the IRS uh, was suppressing under President Obama. And we just released the document today. We got them a little bit ago. And there are 72 pages of Department of Justice documents. Again, this is an IRS scandal that goes beyond the IRS. It goes into the Justice Department, even into the FBI. And these documents show there were communications with Sheldon Whitehouse, the Democrat senator, pressuring the Justice Department to prosecute these groups. And this is the email dated April 2013. Now, remember, that was a little bit less than a month before the Tea Party scandal was exposed by that Treasury Inspector General report. Uh, and, of course, Lois Lerner uh, leaked that they were doing this uh, as well uh, just before the report was issued in May. So this was up until the Tea Party scandal broke that they had this effort to go after uh, criminally the very groups the IRS was suppressing. And this is the email from one of the officials in the Justice Department, their Office of Legislative Affairs, which is the office that takes care of relations with Congress and a government agency, to his colleagues, or her colleagues, not to his colleagues. A new question from Senator Whitehouse, the email goes. Senator Whitehouse is likely to ask the Assistant Attorney General whether the Department of Justice is too deferential to IRS in deciding to prosecute 501c organizations that make false statements regarding their political activities in their IRS filings. Senator Whitehouse is curious why, for example, if a 501c tax organization's files were leaked and they clearly showed that they made false statements, why the Department of Justice wouldn't prosecute the case by itself and not wait for the IRS? Looping in tax division who can also help us come up with a quick response. Now, let's, let's unpack this a little bit. Uh, I hate that phrase since they uh, use that in the media a lot. But uh, 501c tax organizations who made false statements regarding their political, act political activities. We already know what this is about because Lois Lerner talked about it in other emails that Judicial Watch released, that the, uh, these folks on the left and Democrats in Congress wanted to create new law or create a new interpretation of the law that no one has been following that somehow because these 501c4 groups uh, were doing too much politics, they were lying when they signed their tax form saying they were doing politics as the law requires. Now they're changing their mind as to what constituted too much politics, and therefore they should be prosecuted for lying. I mean, if this is not Orwellian totalitarian criminal activity, I don't know what is. The government just changing on a dime the definition of the law and interpretation of the law and trying to put people in jail. Now, it, w it wasn't just an idle question by Mr. Whitehouse, the senator from Rhode Island, because he said that um, he pushed it again, we highlight in the hearing shortly thereafter. But then the emails show that Whitehouse then sent examples of the groups he wanted to prosecute. Included in those groups was Crossroads uh, GPS, which is the uh, uh, 501c organization closely associated with Carl Rove, uh, America's Futures Fund, Americans for Responsible Leadership, Freedom Path, America is Not Stupid, Inc., RightChange.com, too, and A Better America Now. All of those are conservative organizations. So the Justice Department said, give us some idea of who you want to prosecute, Senator, and he sent them along. Now, of course, we previously have uncovered the fact that Lois Lerner's IRS had collaborated with the Justice Department on this prosecution effort. It actually didn't begin in 2013. It began in 2010, where the Justice Department and Lois Lerner were talking about prosecuting these groups, as I described. And in response to the Justice Department's uh, inquiries here, the IRS sent over virtually every file they had on 501c4 organizations, which what the left is concerned about there, which are political groups that can talk about government, uh, talk about campaigns as long as it's not the majority of their efforts. And they didn't want anyone to talk about campaign, um, or at least anyone outside the government, it seems. And so um, they sent all their files, including donor information, to the Justice Department just because they had this idea that maybe they could prosecute people.
And that was illegal to do. And the FBI, once they were caught, had to turn over these million-plus pages of documents back to the IRS. All of that was exposed thanks to Judicial Watch, because we uncovered they were working together initially. Congress found out more, found out about this transfer of documents. Once Congress found out, the FBI said, oh, our mistake, we should return them, when in fact they had material they weren't uh, able to have under law. So, you know, again, this Obama IRS scandal includes, again, abuse of power by Democrats in Congress who wanted to jail Obama's political opponents just before his election or his re-election effort. So don't you believe it? And, you know, we cite in the study, uh, don't you believe it in the sense that uh, this was just an IRS scandal run out of Cincinnati. This was beyond the IRS. The IRS was one government agency sicked on conservatives. And it didn't just mean the IRS not approving Tea Party applications. It also meant, and I tell you, if the IRS scandal had been exposed, it would have meant prosecution of these innocent Americans. I guarantee you. And we found that, uh, we cited a study from the American Enterprise Institute that if the Tea Party hadn't been depressed, there could have been a change of five to eight and a half million votes in the 2012 election, and I would have been complaining about Mitt Romney now. Uh, but it shows you how uh, this IRS suppression effort uh, allowed Mr. Obama to steal an election in plain sight. And uh, I tell you, this IRS scandal is not stopped. We had court rulings recently showing that uh, the IRS abuses haven't stopped. Uh, it was just reported the other day how in a court case the IRS refused to say whether or not they've stopped using the uh, illicit targeting uh, criteria uh, that led to the targeting of the Tea Party and innocent conservatives. So it's a big deal. Now, also this afternoon, there are conservatives in the House who are trying to push forward the motion to impeach John Koskinen, excuse me, John Koskinen, who is the head of the IRS, the IRS commissioner. Now, believe it or not, there are Republican leaders who don't want to impeach the IRS commissioner. And the reason for the impeachment effort is because Koskinen lied about uh, Lois Lerner's uh, uh, documents, uh, and whether they were deleted, and uh, the, he didn't. Uh, he basically kept that information away from Congress for months and months. And that's why there is this impeachment effort. But unbelievably, Republicans really don't want to push it in the leadership. So uh, there's a group of House conservatives who are trying to push it now. And so if you're interested in this issue, you need to share your point of view with your members of Congress, certainly in the House, who are about to vote on it as we speak. And the way to contact your members is 202-224-3121, 202-224-3121. So there's this impeach Koskinen effort, this impeach the IRS commissioner effort, which is coming to a head today, uh, so get the word out. Uh, but impeaching Koskinen may not be the only issue. This is a now a congressional scandal. We've exposed previously how members of Congress were pressuring the IRS. Now we see how they're also pressuring the Justice Department and giving them a list, a hit list, uh, of conservatives to go after. And again, all these documents are available on our website at judicialwatch.org. So, you know, don't, if you don't believe me, then believe your lying eyes by going and looking at the documents yourself. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our book, Clean House, uh, Exposing Our Government Secrets and Lies. We give you the key background on the IRS information all in one place here. It's essential reading. It's your, gov it's your guide to government corruption. It's a bestseller on Amazon right now. We want to make it a bestseller elsewhere on New York Times, but it's also a national bestseller as it is. So go out and get the book for more background on the IRS scandal. Uh, but big IRS documents, uh, you know, I know people are concerned about Clinton's health, but we should be concerned about the health of the First Amendment, which is under attack from the Obama administration, the Justice Department, and their allies in Congress who'd rather jail people uh, than listen to what they have to say and allow them to contribute and uh, contribute uh, to the discussions about public policy we have. So thanks for paying attention, and we'll be here probably at the end of the week to uh, talk about other things happening this week as well, including some new Clinton email developments I'll tell you later about this week. Have a good week.